So welcome. Um, I want to start off um, introducing you to one of my heroes, um, a brilliant mathematician who lived the first half of the 20th century, Alan Turing. And when he wasn't busy saving the world by defeating the Germans uh, by decrypting the Enigma machine, um, he was geeking out with a couple of contemporaries um, thinking about computers long before they actually existed. Um, in particular, they were interested in what does it mean for machines to get smarter? And what does it mean for a machine to be intelligent? And around that question, he proposed a very deceptively simple answer to that question. And he said, well, I will call a machine smart if it can fool me into believing that it's a human. Now, Ed didn't ask me to come here to give you a history lecture on computer science, so the tale I'm going to tell you actually has something to do with data, lots of data, uh, but we'll get back to my friend Alan in, in a little bit. So my story starts um, some early spring weeks back in 2012, when what I do every day, I build models, I monitor performance, and within two weeks, my performance doubled. Now, at this point, I'll have to come clean. So what do I actually do? Um, I'm chief scientist of a uh, digital advertising company called Distillery. And as chief scientist, my task is to just keep track of all the modeling and help target the right people. So I'm building uh, very large-scale predictive models for many, many different products um, that help us target who is most likely to be interested in the product. So a little bit on what that looks like. Um, we have basically partial browsing histories that we collect through cookie technology. And we use that in very large scale systems to then predict what product a given person might be interested in. Now, let me tell you, predicting human behavior is really hard. And being able to double performance of this kind of problem in a matter of two weeks Ah, oh, that raises my red flag. I mean, being skeptical comes with the territory of being a data scientist. So what had actually happened in those two weeks? Well, the only thing that had happened, we had started to integrate additional data. Our company receives about 10 billion bid requests every day. That means I get 10 billion instances where I know that a specific person looked at a specific website. That gives me more information that should help me to predict what they're interested in to then customize the target. But still, factor of two across all products, two weeks, I don't quite buy it. So we started looking into the models to see what was really going on. And we found strange behavior like this one. There was a website called Women's Health. And it turned out the models were convinced that people who go to that website then have a 10x higher probability to check out credit card offerings, or ordering online pizza, or reading about luxury cars. For every single one of these products, having been to Women Health Base seemed to suggest very high intent across many different things. What you see here is the footprint of a large advertising scam. It's a botnet that exploits the by now programmatic buying nature of advertising. And Comscore already estimated back in 2012 that about 36% of all online traffic is non-intentional. Now, why do we say non-intentional rather than non-human? It's not that there isn't a person sitting somewhere, it's just the person isn't even aware that his browser or his computer is surfing the net behind his uh, back and it's not knowing. So we come full circle at this point. I showed you in the beginning the Turing test where Turing was posing how can I tell whether a computer is a human or not and that being the measure of being smart. My problem is I need to tell whether that bid request is coming from a human or from a bot. Now we actually have technology for that. There are ways how to prove you're human. You see them on a regular basis called captures. Now, if I propose that every time before I show you an ad, I make you go through a capture, I don't think I'm going to be in business for long. So I need something else to work with that. 
What I'm going to show you is an algorithm that we implemented, and we're really focusing on the core driver of that, which is the traffic. We're looking at overlap between visitations, so core visitations, people going to one website, what percentage of them then show up on a second? And I get this data again from the uh, ad exchanges. This is the world of 2010, only showing you the connected pieces. So every red dot is a host name, and the link means there's at least 10% co-visitation. Let's look at something here. This is an example, a small structure in there, and you see it's all around Boston, Boston Search. So I can't believe that this is probably human behavior because it all kind of links together. Now, what about our friend Women's Health Base? Well, you can already guess where I'm going to find it. Um, right there. Observe the amount of time people seem to have on their hands when they go to Women's Health Base to then browse all these other sites. Even more impressive, the diverse set of interests. Wrestling news, China on TV, and various other kind of uh, spelling problems. So. I'm absolutely certain that this is non-human traffic. This is a botnet that generates that. Fast forward into 2012, and I didn't even try to make you a picture of 2013, so we see a huge explosion of, of this phenomena. Now, if you have read between the lines of what I told you, none of this actually explains why my performance doubled. Turns out the bot not only sends people to women's health base and wrestling news and China on TV, but they realize that you can sell ads at much higher prices before that you send them to legitimate websites, your businesses, it's called cookie stuffing, because then there will be a whole bunch of retargeters trying to hit them up with ads for their products. Now, on some level, that doesn't bother me much. What bothers me is I'm trying to model and predict that. So this actually messes up with models, and that's when I get slightly unhappy about it. So the fraud here, is getting really into my system. So not only that I don't want to show ads to people who aren't even aware of not seeing it, I need to get the data out of my system because it's actually much easier to predict non-human behavior than human behavior. So we built what's called the penalty box. The moment we see somebody showing up on one of these sites that has very high overlap, we basically say, you're out of your mind. You just have no idea what you're doing right now. I'm going to ignore anything you do and we don't even integrate it in our data collection. After we implemented this, a couple of weeks later, all is back to normal. There went my performance, unfortunately. Um, and uh, some fun facts at the end, uh, looking just at the URLs of these high overlap sites. Um, if the URL had mom in the title, it was three times more likely to be fraudulent. Um, if it said arcade, it was five, uh, five times more likely. And we did find a couple of uh, arcade games uh, for moms. Thank you very much.